Uh, I've got some books that I'm going to give away on the programme today. Listen out for details of when I do that, if you'd like to win the books, because they are books signed by uh, my next guest and written by my next guest as well. Um, I don't think our local newspapers do this much these days, but years ago, if you remember the Lincolnshire Echo, they used to have a junior section on a Saturday where children were sent in poems and articles and review books they were reading at the time. Well, my next guest used to be a regular contributor. Her name is, uh, or was, uh, Catherine Jane Allen. Uh, you may remember that name, Catherine Jane Allen. That's how we would have read about you in the paper, is that yeah, right? Yeah, definitely. What are you now, though? Katie Bowes. Katie Bowes. You might have even read her books. Katie Bowes, B-O-W-E-S. Um, now, tell me what was going on, because you then moved to New Zealand, but what was going on when you were writing to The Echo? How did that come about to start with? Um, they advertised. They had a, I think it was called Children's Corner, and they said we, that they would pay a, a pound for every item published. And so... Yeah, that was the lure, really. And so they had children all over the county just writing in limericks and poems. And um, I wrote a, a piece about my mum when she learned to drive, which probably wasn't very complimentary. I haven't been able to find it, which is probably <laughs> just as well. And, yeah, and I'd, I'd get a pound, and, and so we'd do that once a month. Now, this was you and your sister. Yes. So were you quite competitive to see who would get theirs published in, in the newspaper? Oh, definitely. Yeah? And the Echo came out on a Saturday. We were straight there. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> and you, there's an element of excitement here because you would, you would contribute something, but until the paper arrived, you wouldn't know whether you were in there and the, more importantly, whether you'd get your pound or not. Absolutely. Absolutely. It was all about the pound. <laughs> and, and how long did you do that for? We did that for years. We, did, we honestly did it for years. I don't even know if they do it anymore. I don't think so, because you see it's only a weekly paper now, The Echo. Right. Um, so do you recall reading any of Catherine Jane Allen's writings, limericks, poems, whatever they might have been? How many years are we going back? Oh, it would have been the 80s. In the, in the 80s. 80s, all right. Do you remember that was your favourite thing to do? And I, would your school friends have, have been reading them as, as well? Yeah, definitely. So would they, would they sometimes comment at school that, uh, oh, we, we read your article in the paper at the weekend? Yeah, everybody read the paper, didn't they? You know, we didn't we didn't have the internet and things like that. So yeah, the paper was a huge thing to read. Okay, I'm like I'm liking this. I want to hear some stories of whether it was a regular thing for you on a Saturday. You would read the junior section of the Lincolnshire Echo. Even better, can you remember a contributor Catherine Jane Allen, who is now Katie Bowes, who's with me in the studio and now living in New Zealand. So why did you decide to move to New Zealand? It was a series of chance conversations with other people and a, a friend who um, taught at the school I was working at in Market Harbour kept saying, your kids would love it, they'd love it, they wouldn't wear shoes, Christmas on the beach. And um, it just went from there, really. My husband checked out our eligibility and, and said, we're actually, we're eligible, we've got enough points to go, and so we applied. And then and you, it can take up to three months to get through the expression of interest period, and we scared ourselves because they, they wrote back to us in 24 hours and said, yep, come, apply. Is it because you had particular job skills that they were looking for in New Zealand? How, yeah. how does it work? Yeah, so we went out on the skilled migrant um, section, so my husband's in IT, so that was what they were after at the time. And how do you how do you decide to do that? Because the big wrench is going to be you have family here in Lincolnshire. So yeah. how, how do you say to family in Lincolnshire, bye, we're off to New Zealand? Oh, it's really hard. We spent about a year saying goodbye. I mean, it was a year. We went to the children first and said, how would you feel if we went somewhere the dog couldn't come? And they were allowed to go off and discuss it. And then they came back and said, yeah, we think we'd like to go. We'd like to try it. And so then we had to go through the whole application process. And we sold our house, you know, within months of getting our, our residency visa and, and then we're gone. It's a huge thing to do, though, it isn't it? It was massive. I can't believe we did it. When I look back now, I think we were crazy. We had a one-way ticket. So if it didn't work... That was it. it was, yeah, we couldn't come back. One-way ticket for all of us. How old were the children at the time? Youngest was eight, the eldest was 12. OK, so quite, quite, quite a range there. Yep. But, but possibly a good time to go because they hadn't quite got into senior school, apart from perhaps the oldest one. Yeah, the eldest had. It was definitely harder for her to settle than yeah. the others because she, she did have good friends here. Did they think it was a bit of an adventure? Definitely, definitely. 
I think once we settled down and school hit and, you know, <laughs> trying to find somewhere to live, um, because we went out without jobs, no jobs, no home. We rented a camper van and travelled around and, and, you know, tried to decide where we might quite like to be. So in the early stages then, was it a bit like a holiday? We're, we're, it's a bit unreal. We're in New Zealand travelling around in a camper van. Isn't this all very nice and jolly? It was, and we had the full intention of travelling for as long as we needed, not realising that we then hit the New Zealand kind of boom time, summertime, and they wanted the camper van back. So we actually had no home, no transport, you know, a suitcase each and nowhere to go. So we had to try and find somewhere pretty quickly to actually settle down. Without going into too much detail, how can you afford to do this? You've, you've sold your home yep. here. You must get to the point where you're thinking, we've now got to earn a living because yep. we've got to live here and bring up a family of four children. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So how do you, what, what do you do? Are you then looking for any job you can get? How did it work? Yeah, I mean, we went for all sorts of jobs. I mean, my husband's an IT professional. He ended up going for a job in a supermarket on the, the till and they were saying, oh, you're a bit overqualified. Um, New Zealand is very much two degrees of separation. It, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And so we bumped into a series of people along the way. We ended up renting a, a house from a man we met in Russell. We just happened to camp next to him and then looked him up when we got back to Hamilton. Everybody knows somebody. And he had known someone else we'd met on the other side of the, of the, the country. So, uh, My studio guest at the moment is uh, Katie Bowes. Uh, Katie Bowes is an established, published author in New Zealand, but the books are sold all over the world. It all started... It all started by writing to the Lincolnshire Echo, the junior section at the Echo, with her sister, where they were a little bit competitive as to who would get the pound for having something published in the Echo on a Saturday in their publications. If you remember reading the junior section, or you even remember Catherine Jane Allen as a regular contributor, do call me, let me know, 01522 511219, uh, moved out to New Zealand ten years ago uh, with her four children and her husband as well. Um, how how are the children? I mean, how have the children settled in and, and developed in New Zealand? Yeah, it's really given them room to grow. It's a very different environment. Um, my eldest daughter is um, co-lecturing at a university now. She's doing a PhD. Um, my next daughter is um, also, she's five hours south. She's doing her master's um, in geography. My son's at Wellington at university and my other daughter's also in Palmerston North. So they've all kind of spread their wings and gone. We showed them how small the world was by mm. taking them across it. And um, one of my eldest daughter just turned up one day and said, oh, I'm going to Canada for six months. I don't know if I'll be back. So we dropped her off at the airport when she was, she would have been 20. Um, and she went to Calgary for six months and then she came across the UK and then she did actually come back. Look, let me throw this at you then because you've done this to your parents. Yes, you've gone to I New know. Zealand. How was it for you when your daughter said to you, I'm going to Canada, I might not come back? It was terrible. I really sympathise with my poor mum mm. having to wave us off because my mum was really brave. She was. Uh, she said, "You go where you want to go. We'll find you. We'll follow you. You know, we'll we'll see you." And they have been out to they see you, have haven't they? Which is like, but this is your first time back here. Yep. Ten years. Ten, ten and years and a half ago. Years. Never been back. Tell me about meeting your sister then at the weekend for the first time in ten and a half years. It was like I'd never been away. She said that, actually. It's just like you've never been away. Isn't that you lovely? You just click straight away. Yeah. Yeah, that's oh. wonderful. Um, I want to talk about sort of different things. Um, I've just mentioned Nigel Farage resigned as, uh, you know, leader of UKIP. In New Zealand, how has it been reported in New Zealand, this whole Brexit thing, uh, you know, uh, leaving the EU? Has it been covered much in New Zealand? It wasn't really up until the actual vote. Mm. There was no coverage on the day um, to actually see what was happening. My daughter and I had to go online and watch the little graph, you know, as the votes were counted. We were watching that all afternoon. Um, there were a few commentaries, more a case of... Um, oh, they can trade with us now. OK. So, oh, that's interesting. So they were looking at the positives. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think haven't New Zealand and Australia have already kind of made overtures of, you know... Come and Can trade with trade? us? Yeah. Interesting. Because because when England went into the common market, New Zealand was shut out overnight. Mm. Interesting how it's developed on that side. So let's come back to talk about writing. OK, apart from writing for the junior section of the Echo, 
Did you write at all while you were here, still in the UK, still in Lincolnshire? Yeah, I did. I wrote a children's book, which I actually sold to an agent when we got to New Zealand, um, and they did nothing with it. So I left it for a while. It kind of put me off. I did have um, the beginnings of About Hannah, one of the books, on a laptop as we were going over, and I'd, I'd put a, quite a few hours into that, and it actually got deleted. It just got deleted. Accidentally. It just accidentally wasn't backed up and it got deleted. We had this old Sony Veo and it just disappeared off it. Um, so, I, yeah, I literally started again. Oh, wow. Um, and here it is. Um, just give me a, a feel for the sort of books you write. Uh, this looks quite romantic at the front cover on yeah, this Yeah, romance one. mysteries. Yeah. Um, kind of cosy mysteries is, is the genre. Um, it's a big book. Yeah, uh, it, it's a, this, 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 is, this, this is 555 pages of reading here. And that's a third of it. Is it? Yeah, so th originally the first book I had was something like 450,000 words and Amazon were, were suggesting that I paid them to actually give it to people because it was so big. So I ended up splitting the first book into three and kind of selling that as a serial. You can now get it as a box set. They've improved their technology, so you can actually get something that big. And we were talking about the fact that, OK, in New Zealand is where you, where you write your books, but they're sold all over the world. Is that something the internet has made easier, yeah, do you think? Yeah, definitely. My biggest market is probably the US. Really? Yeah. So have you toured? Have you, have you been across to promote your books in the States? No, I haven't yet. Come on. This is, your, this is the next <laughs> thing. No, the other big thing I notice, and how could I not notice this... Demons on her shoulder, KT Bowes, the Lincoln Imp, and Lincoln Cathedral yeah, on your front. Set in Lincoln. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Did you have the idea of this while you were here then or when you were in New Zealand? No, when I was in New Zealand. Okay. Tell me a bit about the book. Yeah, so it's a woman who's hiding from her past. She's changed her identity. She's changed everything about herself, and she's working as a counsellor in a little parish that I've invented um, down near the high street, near the railway line. And um, is it a parish that knew, you knew well? No, no, okay. just invented That's right. it. That's okay. That's right. I'm only asking. <laughs> yeah, no liable libel. <laughs> <laughs> and, and is that w w with a book like this? Did you draw on some of your experiences yeah, though of, of living in and around Lincoln? Definitely. I mean, anyone who's reviewed it I said oh you can tell that the author's been there lived there you just get a flavor of the city I've actually had people travel here if they've been doing you know a UK trip they've actually come to Lincoln and see the cathedral and they messaged me because I answer all my own messages on Facebook and yeah. uh, on email and they've said we've been we've seen him does the imp get a message so the imp yeah, is in the book so. very much in the very book okay so. well this, well you've got a magnificent photograph of the cathedral on the front there as well which is a magnificent building in itself um so what sort of things are you working on now so I've got another series, um, the Actuary series, which is based in Market Harbour in Leicestershire, which is another place we've lived. There's a gentleman either doing up or undoing his shirt he on the front. Never judge shirt. a book by its cover, no. but I always do. Uh, so that looks a little bit um, sensual. Yeah. Is yeah. that right? Yes, it's yeah. very nice. Uh, how do you go about picking what goes on the front cover or is that left to the publisher? Um, no, I have a huge say in what goes on the cover. Because this is your image, isn't it? This yeah. is you that, yeah. that we're portraying Yeah, here. definitely. I've got a lot of control. I don't think I'd have it any other way. No. Fantastic. Look, it's lovely to see you. I want to just touch on something else, because it was your mum that contacted us here at BBC Radio Lincolnshire, and you were just sharing with me uh, a story of when BBC Radio Lincolnshire first came on air. Yeah. Tell, yeah. Me, tell me how excited everybody was. Oh, they were so excited. The fact that we had our own radio station. I can't remember what. we Maybe we were just listening to BBC Radio 1 before. Um, but to have our very own radio station and they're mentioning streets that we know and, and talking, you know, people would ring in. It was a real community thing. And we were trying to work out this morning why on earth I would be off school on a Tuesday. So I must have had some spurious illness. Um, but I remember the radio station. We knew the day that it was going live and the radio station was tuned ready and all of a sudden it just popped up and it was you're listening to BBC Radio Lincolnshire and everyone was so excited you That's know brilliant. yeah I remember my mum the neighbour running down the street and oh it's on it's on have you heard it <laughs> <laughs> lovely uh, Katie Bowes thank you very much thank indeed for, for spending some time with us and enjoy the rest of your visit you're back home I even am. for a short while lovely to see you thank you very much and we're going to give away copies of those books in a little while listen out I'll tell you how you can win those mm.